Let's be honest here, a lot of fan theories read like the lunatic scrawlings of madmen with a severe detachment problem. They're baseless, illogical, and horribly entertaining for all of the wrong reasons, but they don't exactly improve the gameplay experience. However, every once in a while, just occasionally, some theories actually improve the games they focus on, adding complexity and a whole new way to enjoy classic games despite seeming equally as bonkers on the surface. With that in mind, I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are eight crazy fan theories that actually improve games. Number 8. Final Fantasy VIII – Squall is Dead Fair warning, most of these are fairly morbid. When Squall goes head-to-head -head with Idea, the evil sorceress, it's fair to say that he gets rickety-wrecked, son, and he looks pretty bloody dead. Not so fast, yells Square, as he wakes up moments later absolutely fine. What? How is that? Well, could he really actually be dead? Possibly. Particularly considering how his crewmates completely fail to mention his not-so-subtle impaling at the end of the first disc. Plus, there's that not-at-all horrifying bit where if you freeze-frame you see a picture of Squall's head with a gaping void where his face should be. Wonderful. I'm sure he's fine. Number 7. Pokemon. You're actually the bad guy. As you might imagine from a game with so many fans and so rich a universe, no video game series has spawned as many theories as Pokemon, and probably the most intriguing is that Ash isn't actually as squeaky clean as he might first seem. When you first meet your rival in Lavender Town in the original Pokemon Red and Blue, he asks if you know what it's like to have one of your Pokemon die, and one theory has it that you killed his Raticate in a prior battle, setting him on a quest for vengeance. You destroyed his life and gave him a morbid raison d'etre, compelling him to become a champion, which he does, only for you to then defeat him to become Indigo League champion yourself to the annoyance of his grandfather, you evil f bastard. Number 6. Batman kills Harley Quinn's baby. But Batman's not a killer, is he? Is he? According to one theory, Batman makes Harley Quinn miscarry in Arkham City, which is awful, obviously. There are hints throughout the game that Harley is pregnant with the Joker's offspring, from the pregnancy test to the lullaby she sings creepily in the credits. Admittedly, the DLC says she wasn't and that the test she used could offer false positives, but that doesn't mean anything. Evidence is no theory killer, after all. Come on, facts? Get out of here! If you think back to her first appearance in the game, she tries to attack Batman only to be thrown to the floor, leaving her in a state of discomfort. At first you'd be forgiven for thinking she's exaggerating, since it can't possibly have hurt that much, but then, with the other evidence in place, Batman becomes a baby-killing murderer. Ah. Number 5. GLaDOS is suicidal Portal is the perfect dystopian sci-fi, controlled by a megalomaniacal destabilized supercomputer who entices and punishes in equal measures, intent only on testing and testing and testing until the end of time, or until her new toys end up broken. But did GLaDOS have a different endgame? Beyond her obvious insanity, GLaDOS's black heart could hide a darker, more tragic secret. She's been reliving her nightmare, stuck alone with no one to test thanks to her own murderous activities, with the suggestion being that she keeps awakening new test subjects, or victims, as playthings. So why does she equip her testees, that's test subjects, not testicles, with the tools and skills to defeat her? Well, it could all be because GLaDOS has a death wish. She's sick of her captivity and she wants an end. It certainly puts a new spin on that Still Alive song and adds an oddly touching full stop to GLaDOS's story. Number 4. Super Mario The Play Mario is at an impasse, stuck in a job he hates and married to a woman who should know that after 23 years of marriage, I don't like rocket salad, Helen! As a result of his miserable life, he invents a secret world where he is a hero, taking on incredibly stacked odds to destroy a lizard king and rescue a helpless blonde princess. As such, the theory goes that Mario 3 was never real, it was just a stage play. Curtains rise at the start, characters enter stage left and proceed to navigate a series of levels which feature some odd, artistic choices, like environments that seem to be bolted onto an invisible background, as if they were stage dressings. Platforms are also physically attached to things, unlike in the first game, and everything seems a lot more man-made than before. Are you actually seeing Mario reliving his greatest adventure? Number 3. Animal Crossing 
Something is very wrong here. Animal Crossing is a cute, harmless game, right? Wrong! It's actually a dark nightmare that traps the lead character in a colorful prison, like an awful Truman show with man-sized animals and forced labor, all enforced through the grinning smiles of creatures pretending to be friendly. You can't escape, your lodgings are as bare as a prison cell with no toilets, and you're basically forced into an endless cycle of mortgages and manual labor, despite barely being ten years old. This is not the holiday that gaming is supposed to be. Number two! Pac-Man slash Pong. Probably the silliest theory of all suggests that the Pac-Man universe and the world of minimalist classic sports game Pong are linked together by a social dynamic that places them together on a complex class ladder. The theory says that Pong is the upper-class world where people play tennis endlessly at their leisure on account of being terribly rich, burning through balls like there's no financial restriction on how many can be used, because frankly, there isn't. So where do all the balls go? Well, in this scenario, Pac-Man is the lower rung of the social ladder where the character is forced to endlessly collect the discarded balls of Pong's socially adept. He then sells them on to those who wish to appear more wealthy with their ball stocks, just about scratching a living in the process, but having to evade guards hell-bent on stopping any thefts that will destabilize the accepted social order of things. Huh? Tell me that isn't perfectly logical. Go on. Please. Number one. Mario is the villain. For years, Nintendo have been pushing forth the jovial plumber who never actually seems to fix any pipes as the archetypal video game hero. I suppose you could call him a shit plumber for wackers. Hashtag shit plumber for wackers. He conquers evil lands, vanquishes a beastly foe, and saves the girl, eventually. But has Mario been hiding a deep, dark secret from his earliest days? There's a theory that Mario never quite evolved from his days as the monkey-capturing, animal-controlling devil who tried to make Donkey Kong Jr. an orphan. And the hints are there for all of us to see. Consider for a minute how peaceful the Goombas and Koopa Troopas are in the first Super Mario Bros. game. What was initially perceived as comical ineptitude is in fact the tactical naivety when faced with an invading force. They don't know how to defend their homes, and are forced to offer themselves as cannon fodder as the little Italian mercilessly takes over every one of their lands, conquering every castle under the thinly veiled guise of rescuing the princess. Mario is an anarchist, intent on deposing King Koopa and we're all enabling his evil empire. Yeah. And that's our list. Are there any crazy theories we've missed off? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can even follow me here on Twitter if you fancy. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.